Well, for more, we're going to be speaking with journalist Daham El Anazi, who is in Riyadh. But first, joining us in studio is Jonathan Furziger, a reporter for Bloomberg News who's covered the Gulf extensively. And Jonathan, you have written about this. How does Israel conduct business with countries like Saudi Arabia that it has no, certainly no official or open relations at all? For years, it was very quietly. Um, it was clear to a lot of people that there was action, that there was commerce, that there was trade. A lot of it was uh, weapons trade between Israel and, and the Gulf. This came out um, a couple of years ago, very strangely. Uh, there's an Israeli company called Elbit Systems. And um, a technician of theirs uh, turned up dead in Saudi Arabia. Um, he had fallen or was pushed from a hotel uh, balcony. And suddenly it was clear that there was um, some uh, trade between Israel and, and this Israeli company. But it, it, it's beyond that, particularly now in the uh, space of uh, cyber hacking and security. Um, there is uh, a great deal of uh, demand in Saudi Arabia for Israeli software. The hum, to what degree is that kind of cooperation, whether it's in security or trade or business ties, an open secret there in Saudi Arabia? Well, what your guest said before, but uh, I can, you know, uh, say about the Saudi-Israeli uh, relationship that as an opinion writer, in Saudi Arabia, uh, I believe that uh, could be there will be. I mean, uh, could be um, the relationship, the Saudi relationship, the Saudi-Israeli relationship uh, could be started. Uh, you know, um, in, in this time, uh, and the Saudi and the Israeli government, they should really, you know, um, talk about the peace and make an official, you know, uh, meetings with the uh, with each other, uh, so they can end the Palestinian-Israeli, uh, uh, you know, conflict. Uh, after that, we can't talk about any economy, uh, you know, relation between Saudi Arabia and Israel or any, you know, uh, uh, you know, economy relation between, you know, uh, Israel and other Gulf uh, states. Uh, right now, I think we should start with talking about peace and negotiating, you know, between and, and, and talking about the negotiation between Israeli and Palestinian, uh, you, know, uh, you know, peoples so they can... Uh, get to uh, you know a peace process and this peace uh -huh. process should start but yes well it's it's clear i mean uh, sadly uh, from this part of the middle east that a peace process doesn't seem to be on the horizon uh, at the moment at least at what point do you think what exactly would it take for those ties again whether it's business or otherwise to go on the record to go public we can't we can't we can't separate the, the two files you know the israeli arab relationship and the saudi uh, israeli relationship like the palestinian issue should be solved okay and you know king salman yesterday in his speech he said that uh, this you know um, uh, issue should be resolved or he mentioned to to the uh, you know israeli palestinian uh, you know uh, conflict uh, now talking about the saudi israeli uh, relational diplomatic relationship i think you know the visit uh, that paid uh, i mean the visit uh, for mr netanyahu the prime minister to oman it was a very uh, good and strong message that israel wants to start you know the peace negotiation or even the the, the uh, relationship between Israel and Arab, uh, you know, be, uh, the, the, uh, being seriously taken by, you know, the prime minister and the Omani uh, leader, uh, Sultan uh, Qaboos. Uh, now, if the Israeli wants to really to, to, to make a relationship with, with Saudi Arabia, okay, I think they have to, to, to uh, you know, uh, they have to, to uh, talk about a peace process uh, between the Palestinian and Israeli, supporting by America, and ask the help of Egypt and Saudi Arabia, uh, for you know, to to end the uh, the the conflict between Israel and 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 and, and uh, you know the Palestinian uh, people. Uh, before that, I don't think so. It's it, it could be you know a strong uh, relationship between any Gulf country and and the uh, the uh, you know uh, um, you know okay. uh, Israel. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, Jonathan, certainly that we're talking for here in Tel Aviv with Dom and Riyadh, that is one sign of how things have changed. You just wrote a very fascinating article for Bloomberg on maybe another indicator, which is a synagogue operating now in Dubai, mainly for the Jews, including Israelis who do business there. 
Nobody would believe it. Um, when I uh, wrote about it, it was kind of like, what the? It was um, not something people expected. But in fact, there is a very active uh, expat community. Um, the, uh, there are uh, Jews from the United States, from Britain, from South Africa, and uh, they've sort of coalesced into a, a congregation. There are about 200 of them who show up for the Passover Seder, and every week they have a, um, a villa, a uh, rented um, uh, house building, and they have uh, two Torah scrolls, and they have a uh, very traditional service uh, with uh, a kiddish um, snack after afterwards and and lunch. It's, it's and a lovely place. And they it openly. Something that in in even in du though Dubai is quite liberal, it's still part of you know the the UAE. It would have been unthinkable just a few years, at least to make something like that public the way they did to you. Unthinkable, um, and it didn't come easy. I first learned about this uh, synagogue two years ago. And the uh, leadership there um, said, please, do not speak about this. Not just to me, but any time there was a sermon during services, the, there's no rabbi. There's a lay leader. And he said, let's just understand that the UAE is trying to introduce a policy of tolerance. It's not an embrace, but we want, they want people to feel comfortable from all religions, um, it's sort of, you know, in economic speak, it's trying to knock down some of the barriers to entry in the market. Tolerance to is people. sort of the first step towards eventual potential embrace. Uh, Daham, I want to ask you about that a little bit bigger picture then. You were on a program, I believe, airing in Saudi Arabia, uh, where it was said we have no problem with the Jewish religion or even with Israelis. We want to see Israel as a friend and not an enemy. That seems to me like quite a statement uh, to be aired publicly on Saudi television. Uh, just how common or not uh, is an opinion like that? Uh, let me tell you something. If we want to separate the two files, like the Israeli-Saudi relationship, okay, and the you know the Arab-Israeli relationship, this is another story, okay. What we are talking about now is Arab relationship with Israel. But if you talk about the Saudi-Israeli relationship, this is something different. Like. Uh, if the Israeli government wants to make us uh, to start, let's say, a relationship with, with Saudi Arabia, okay, uh, not even uh, 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 you know concerning about the Palestinian issue that much, they should do the Saudi interest, okay? They should, let's say, now Benjamin Netanyahu trying to attack Iran more than eight years that he was promising, and he didn't th do the promise. So uh, if he is a good ally, or he was, he is trying to get, you know, to, uh, he is trying to to show uh, Saudis that he is a good ally. Why did not they attack? Iran and and destroy the uh, you know the nuclear uh, program in in Tehran and the and the uh, you know uh, missiles the the, the uh, missiles program the, you know well, and, and Tehran is number mean, one if number two just let me finish my, sure. you know just let me finish my opinion you know. I don't represent the Saudi government. I don't represent, you know, uh, you know, uh, the Saudi uh, foreign minister. I am an opinion writer, and I talk about myself and the other Saudi who thinks the same. Okay, or, or they, they believe in my my opinion. We believe in in our leader, you know, the reformer Prince Mohammed bin Salman. He's our crown prince, and 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 we believe in his vision to 2030. And this vision, you know, depend on you know uh, getting rid of the getting rid of the uh, you know Iranian dangers. Okay. Israel did not show uh, very good help with this uh, file. Uh, so if we if we talk about economic relationship between Saudi Arabia and Israel, that means only two you know t t ties between us and Israel, not between the Arabs and Israel. Uh, Saudi Arabia right now they're representing the Arab interest and the Muslim interest for the uh, you know. So the, uh, there is an issue between the Palestinian and Israeli. We have to to to, to, to you know to take this in consideration. But if they want, if they uh, in my opinion, if they want to have a very you know direct relationship with saudi arabia as a country not you know uh you know like you know uh, i mean uh, uh you know not including you know discussing the, the 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 palestinian issue okay i think that saudi leaders uh can uh you know uh, get involved with this uh, you know uh, negotiation uh if israel 
you know, show a serious uh, action in the Saudi and taking and and and, and helping the Saudi interest, which right. is right now changing this uh, the Iranian regime in Tehran, the militia, you know, led by uh, Khamenei right now in Iran. Uh, second, uh, you know, helping with 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 uh, you know with uh, making a pressure on Turkey, the new Ottomans. You know, we are fighting with you know with new Ottomans more than two years. Israel, right. uh, you know, did not show a bit. So, yes. Adaham, I'm sorry, to, I'm sorry to pause you, but unfortunately we're out of time.